All right, everybody, welcome back. Bearded Drums here, your personal drum nerd. So it's getting to be that time of year again. We are getting into spring, which means spring cleaning. And usually about this time every year, I take my drums out, I wipe them down, I clean them, I change any heads that need to be changed, tighten any screws that have come loose, but I also do this with my vintage collection. I get all my drums out, I get my snare drums out, I kind of make sure the heads are still in tune and make sure they're still playable. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be taking a look at three vintage snare drums from my personal collection. I have managed to grab these drums over about a 10 year period. I have two Gretsch snare drums and one Selangerland. So let's go ahead and get started with today's episode. Now, quickly before we jump into looking at these drums, I just want to state at least my personal opinion on how important it is for any drummer to own at least some piece of vintage gear. Not only do you get to own a piece of history, but there is a tone and an age or a character that comes along with vintage drums that can just not be gotten by new gear. I've been lucky enough to get my hands on a lot of vintage gear over the years, cymbals, snares, drum kits, and if you haven't seen my episode about my vintage drum kits here, you can click right up here to view that video. But I think especially with snare drums, there is just a sound that comes through with an aged snare drum that you just cannot get from a modern snare drum, and I've actually stupidly enough let a lot of very cool snare drums that were vintage get away from me i've had two slingerland radio kings and i've had a couple of gretsch round badges that i have just gotten rid of over the years because i did not use them and i regret this because now i wish i still had them in my collection so i would encourage every drummer out there if you don't own a piece of vintage gear say a snare drum Definitely look at doing this. I think not only will you enjoy the craftsmanship and the look of a vintage snare, but once again, the sound that comes from an aged piece of wood or metal. So enough talking, let's jump over to the snare drums and take a look at these three vintage pieces of my personal snare drum collection. All right, so the first one up is my Gretsch round badge. This is in a gold sparkle. And this one, I believe, and I can only approximate, is a 60s era drum, mainly because the little paper tag that would normally be inside the shell of one of these drums has been removed or somebody was dumb enough to take it off, so I don't know exactly the date of this drum. I can only go by the badge that it has on it and the micro-sensitive strainer. Now, I absolutely love this drum. It has a warm fat sound. I think that has a lot to do with vintage drums that have reinforcing rings. These tend to fatten the sound and warm up the drum. I love the way it looks. I'm a big fan of the vintage style Gretsch lugs and I love the micro sensitive strainer. It is very cool. It still works to this day. I try to play this drum as much as possible when I require a different voice out of my snare drum or a gig that requires a little less volume than maybe a modern snare drum would provide. Now, like with most of my vintage snares, I tend to keep a one-ply coated on all these drums, so they're kind of in line with the time that in which they were played. I don't try to put a two-ply or like a dry vented head on these. I actually like them to sound the way they did back in the day. So let's put it on the snare stand, let's play it a little bit, and I'll give you an idea of how this 60s era round badge Gretsch snare sounds. All right, now moving on to the next snare drum. This one is a Gretsch 14 by four, 
and this drum actually has a very neat little story. The shell for this drum was actually a late 50s Gretsch marching snare. And the builder of the drum, who I personally know, actually took this shell, cut it in half, and made two snare drums out of it. I got the one that is a 14 by 4 so it's not all accurate as far as the parts that are on it, but it's a very neat little drum and it has a very different sound from the other vintage drums that I own. So this drum has been rewrapped in an almost Mardi Gras colored oyster pearl finish. It has double lugs, it has the hoop saver hoops on it, and it has this very vintage throw off. And even though this drum is not in mint condition or has not been kept in its original form, I really like it because it has a very open, raspy sound, kind of a dirty sound. So usually when I need a snare drum that has a very gritty, raspy, kind of trashy sound, this is the one I grab and I usually leave it in a mid to mid-low tuning. So it's very open, it has a lot of ring, and a definitely a different character than any other drum that I own. So let's put this little Frankenstein 14x4 on the stand and let you listen to it. And last but not least, which is probably my favorite drum, this is my 60s era Slingerland Artist Model in White Marine Pearl. And I really love this drum. It's probably in the best condition of any of the drums that I own. And I'm once again kind of approximating the date. I'm only going by the badge that it has on it and the serial number. And with the serial numbers apparently on Slingerlands, from what I have read on the internet, they did not go sequentially in order. The guy that was putting the badge on would just kind of grab one out of the bin and put it on the drum. But everything that I found online leads me to believe that this is a 60s era artist model, and it's a 5.5 by 14. I really love this drum. It has a very classic sound. It sounds usually best tuned in the mid to mid upper range. It works perfectly. It's again probably in the best condition of any drum that I have. It has the original wrap. There's not too many dings or scratches on any of the hardware. And I really love vintage drums that are done in a white marine pearl finish. It has reinforcing rings, it has those awesome stick saver hoops, it has the Zoomatic strainer, and I love the way Slingerland lugs look. So now let's take a listen to this Slingerland 60s era artist model 14 by 5.5. So there is my small collection of vintage snares, three different drums that sound very different from each other. And as I said on the Gretsch and the Slingerland, I'm kind of approximating the date by the info that I can find online in the books that I own that they're 60s eras. But if there are any vintage drum experts out there that happen to watch this video and can give me any more info, please leave me a comment below. And just to reinforce my point from the beginning of the video, I encourage every drummer out there that doesn't own a piece of vintage gear to go out and try to find something, whether it be some vintage cymbals, a vintage drum set, or vintage snare drums. It's a very cool piece of history that you can own, and as I said, it's usually a sound that cannot be gotten by a modern piece of gear. 
So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you enjoyed getting a look at these three very different sounding vintage snare drums. I really do enjoy owning these little pieces. They give me great tones. They give me some options when I'm doing my playing. And it's just neat to own a piece of vintage gear. So remember, if you want to stay up to date on the latest drum gear, pick up little tips and tricks, and take a look at vintage gear like we did today, consider subscribing to the channel. As always, hope everyone has a great week, and I'll see you on the next one.